Yara Gelt, uh, it's morning here, so hi, see ya. <laughs> uh, Lindy na kidnok, uh, matarur tanelok. Hi, I'm Lindy and I'm learning Hungarian. Jó napot. Jó estét. 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 I've only been learning for five days, as you can probably tell by my accent. And this is definitely the hardest language I've ever tried. I don't even have a textbook yet. So without further ado, this is how I learned Hungarian. So the process I decided to follow uh, when learning Hungarian was number one, and you can apply this to any language. Number one is just to start. And there's no... I guess people could argue about this, that there's a right place to start. You know, you start with the alphabet or the pronunciation or greetings. For me, there's no right or wrong place to start. You just start. Even if I don't understand a single word, I'm still gonna go listen to some music, listen to the radio, just to get used to the sounds. Whatever you do, you've heard me say this before, do it in that language. So I've downloaded a Hungarian radio app and I listen to that in the mornings and when I have free time or when I'm doing dishes. <laughs> And I think my vocab, I think I know like 15 Hungarian words, that's nothing. But I know words like nem, which means no, and it negates words. So when people say nem on the radio, I'm like, yes, I understood a word. And that's enough to like get me excited and motivated. So I've downloaded an app called Mondly, Mondly, I don't know how you say that. Um, it's kind of like Memorize, but it's really cool. So I use that to learn some pronunciation. And yeah, so uh, using the Mondly app, uh, listening to the radio and listening to music. I'm absolutely obsessed with music of any other language. So uh, let's see how I use music to learn Hungarian. <laughs> I'll look up the lyrics in Hungarian on a website like this and then I'll just sort of copy paste these into Google Translate to get the word by word translation but on the actual video someone was so nice to post an English translation so I just used that to write down the English translation and then check the Google Translate with that so after immersion and just kind of getting used to the new sounds and words of the language, you need to get down to some serious studying. So I have uh, watched some videos on YouTube of how to pronounce the alphabet. Ah. Ah. B. B. T. T. And I have a really good friend on Skype and he's also helped me um, be able to say these letters correctly. So I'll often Skype him and make sure I'm saying things correctly. Speaking of pronunciation, there's a website called Forvo, which is a place where you can go and request native speakers to say a word for you. So if I don't know the pronunciation of the word, which is <laughs> very often the case, I'll go to that website and I'll request someone to say a word for me. You can search for the language and you can see a whole list of words that people have pronounced or said already. So I try and test myself by saying the word first and seeing if I've said it correctly and then listening to how the native speaker has said the word. If I don't know a word, then I'll look it up on Google Translate. I don't really recommend using Google Translate, so if you have a great Hungarian dictionary or online dictionary you can refer me to, let me do so, because you can't really trust Google a lot. Sorry, Google. Another important thing to remember is that learning a language is also learning a culture. So um, my parents visited Budapest a long time ago, and my mom gave me some photos of the city, and she gave, she, my mom used to collect stamps, and she gave me all of her Hungarian stamps. And it's just really exciting to see a little bit of the culture. I mean, I've never been to the country, and it's really exciting to see um, the stamps that come from there. So it's nice to just be immersed, not necessarily only linguistically, but culturally as well. Here is my Hungarian notebook, a logical notebook. Um, and I've decided to do this in conjunction with a study gram. 
which is Hungarian Journey. If you want to find me on Instagram, uh, I track my learning le learning language progress. I track my language learning progress there. So if you have a study gram or Langblur or whatever, whatever, please follow me there and I shall follow you back. Righty, so you can see here it says basic Hungarian notes from Skype call. So this is the very first Hungarian I've ever learned in my life. And you know, the first thing I learned to say was Sia, which means hello. And then I was like, okay, but it's an SZ, why isn't it like Zia or something? So it helped me learn the pronunciation to talk it out with my friend who was teaching me. And then I learned that SZ is an S and an S is an ESH. So <laughs> Budapest is not Budapest, it's Budapest. And the next thing I learned was Kusanum. Kusanum, which means thank you. Right over here. Before I even started with the alphabet, I just sort of threw myself into the situation of learning Hungarian by Skype and I just took a note of everything, like where the conversation led. Um, and unfortunately, you know, I'm not, I don't know the IPA pronunciation and stuff, I'm not a linguist, just like languages, so I kind of use Korean and Japanese and Afrikaans and French um, to, to write down what the sound sounds like. So if a particular Hungarian sound is closest to French, at risk of offending some real linguists out here, um, you know in French, of means egg. It kind of sounded like the of sound for me in Kusunum, so I just wrote of here. My friend on Skype helped me to learn a little bit about pronouns. Um, that kind of gave me insight on how difficult Hungarian verbs are because uh, they change a lot. The verb enni, which means to eat, I was like, okay, well, first person singular would end in ok, ek or uk. And I was like, okay, so enni becomes enok, enuk. And he's like, no, no, it's Essek, 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 I still can't say that. So there's a lot of irregulars and a ton of suffixes and prefixes and things you still need to learn. Um, but I love the challenge and I'm really excited to keep going. Another excellent way of immersion is to change your phone into the language you're learning. So my phone is Hungarian. Don't know <laughs> most of the words, but I am learning new words, which is fantastic. The words in Hungarian are so long, they need to scroll. <laughs> This is so funny. So after I learn some grammar and improve my vocabulary, I'm going to try and write my own sentences and basic paragraphs, and then I'll upload them to websites like italki or Langate. And I'm going to keep Skyping with my friends so I can keep the speaking up. So usually I'll learn a language like kind of in isolation by myself with books and audio and stuff, but I'll never speak it. So I really want to try and make Hungarian a language that I try to speak often. Cool guys, thank you so much for watching, Kazanam. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet and you want to see more language learning videos, please do so. If you're learning Hungarian or if you want to just exchange language learning tips, please leave a comment and I'll see you guys later. Peace on Tashlasha. Bye bye.